them until I come back. So there's constant training. Um, the enemy, the enemy was kicked out of heaven because of his training. <laughs> because he wanted, he wanted to trade so that he could have more than God. Yeah. And he was so good at what he did, a third of the angels bought into his training. Isn't that amazing? I mean, they were, they were deceived. You can read this in Ezekiel 28, um, talking about Satan. It said that he was kicked out of heaven because of all the iniquity in his heart and for his trading. Some of it could be merchandising or marketing. Or, but it's, the word is trading. And let me just, okay, if I already started here, this is a quick two-second summary. Satan wants you on his trading floor because he wants, he wants to give you something that's not true. So he can take from you what is true. He wants to take, he wants to offer you a deception. But what he wants is your heritage. He wants your authority. He wants what God has given you. Because he wants that more than anything else. So he's constantly looking for ways to trade with you. To get you on his trading board to say, look, you know, he did this with Jesus. Okay, so I'm going to go real quick here today. Go with me to Luke chapter 4. And just begin, we'll take the first few verses. I want to walk you through this. I want you to see how trading and what was taking place in these trades. How many of y'all were here the last time I talked on, on trades? Okay. Some of you were. Um, I'll try to do something to go back and maybe give you some notes or something to go back to if it's important. Um, Can you go ahead and look at Luke, Luke chapter 4? Um, let me just get to it real quick. Luke chapter 4, verses 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards was hungry when that, those days had ended. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to bread. Okay. It's obvious he was trying to get him to do something wrong, right? But I want you to see what he was... See, he's constantly... What was he looking for? He wanted Jesus to step out of what the plan was the Father... Because if, if Jesus fulfilled the plan of the Father, Satan was finished. So he, he said, okay, look, if I can just get Jesus to do something like to step back into his position as a son of God. And with me, he said, I left everything in heaven. And I came and I took on myself the complete form of a man. He, because you see, for him to die for our sins, he had to be one of us. So if Satan could get him out of being one of us, step back into being the Son of God, then he could no longer bring the sacrifice. He could no longer deal with sin. See, there's things that when we look at what the enemy is offering, and I'll deal with some things for a minute. Uh, so then, but he, what, what, is, what is Jesus saying to him? Okay, see, I think a lot of times we think he, he was stating it is written, meaning from the Word of God. I now understand something different from Psalms 139. Uh, I'm just totally rearranging this sermon. <laughs> Psalm 139, 15, and 16 declares that God has a book about us. He has written 
books about you. In that book is your destiny. It tells, it, it reveals all the things God was thinking. Okay, what can I imagine for John Scott? Yeah, he could, he could raise the dead. Yeah, he's going to do that. He could go to several other islands. I have a reason to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to Okay. I'm just going to throw some out. I got a lot of this Let's say that in that book, God declared that he, he said, I'm going to have him be a, a supernatural ministry that is going to reach over a million people. So here comes the enemy. Oh. And he says, hey, John, how would you like to have this job? Look, this job, you, you, could, you, could, you could make $100,000 a year with this job. Okay, come on in. Look up. And you, you look at it and you say, that doesn't feel right. But the $100,000 looks good. Yeah. You understand? Satan paints for you looks good. That don't look bad. You see, it's always been a mystery to me how he got Eve to be tempted to become like God when she already was like God. But it really, there was a temptation to, to have a place, you know, where your pride really rise up. You can be known as someone famous. You can be known all maybe, maybe the temptation might be. John, how would you like to be Senator John Stalin? <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The temptation is not good. But if you stay with God, he can reach a hundred, he can reach a million people for God. For the kingdom. I mean, see, so the, temp, the temptation to eat was a real look. There was something there that lured her. Really, wow. That looks good. But it lured man out of the plan of God. See, that's where it comes down to. So, but Jesus, but Jesus said, you know, in Romans, no, in, in, uh, in, in fact, just quickly, look at Hebrews 10, 7. I want you to see this. And we'll just somehow, we're going to make our way through, through all of this. Well, go back to verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire. But his body you have. In the bottom of the book, it is written of me to do your will of God. I believe when Jesus said it is written, he was talking about what God's plan was. It was written down, everything that Jesus was to accomplish. And he said, It is written. Okay, let's just keep going. We're back in Luke chapter 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I'm going to live by every, listen, this is where we got to get to. We've got to come to the place that we want to live our life, not only by what is written in here, but what's written in our book. Amen. I get a hold of it. Because if God has, has designed a life for you, and by the way, after with me, J.C., Cynthia's cousin, Cynthia's niece, right? I forgot to introduce you, but it's awesome to have you this morning. All the way to America. All the way to America. You see, the thing of it is, we've got to become determined. I want in my life what is what God wrote in His book about me. I don't want something else. I don't want, I, I don't want something that I created. That's why in, in Proverbs, 3, 5, 
5, 6, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust that he's not only has a plan for you, but he knows how to bring you there. And lean not to your own understanding. Listen, don't, don't get to the place that everything that happens in your life is because of what, how you understand things to be. Your education, your training, that brings you everything that you know that Listen, we've got to find in our lives the evidence that we're fulfilling what God wrote in His book about us. We need the evidence that we're walking out a plan that is the will of God, that is going to be the most glorious thing, it is the very thing you would have, had you known, you would have given your life for, and yet you sacrificed it for some frivolous thing that the enemy put out there because we weren't paying attention to what the enemy was throwing at us. But these were real temptations coming at Jesus. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to him, All authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and to whomsoever I want to be. How many of you know what Matthew 28, 18 says? What? All authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that was because that was what was written. That was the plan. God was going to give him all authority. So here's Satan saying, oh. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all go through, there's a program. So, this lady had won $200,000 a year for her in the lottery or something. Jenny asked me, said, Mom, how would you like to win $200,000 a year for life? What interested me was what rose up in my spirit. I said, absolutely. I think I had rose up in I said, absolutely not. understand what's written in heaven about us. 
because it destroys them. It won't. That's it. Oh, look good. A hundred million dollars. Does that look good? But there's a deception to it. There's a lie to it. He's just trying to get you back on his trading floor. Because he wants to defeat you. Um, okay, I'm just going to give me three or four minutes. I'm going to close it. I want to make this one statement. Most of us, when we're talking about things need to change, and that it's not about changing what you do. Changing from where you do it. It's not about changing your prayer time, but instead of praying out of fear, coming over and coming out of confidence. I'm not going to pray out of anxiety, I'm going to pray out of trust. So it's not a matter of, I don't change praying, I just pray to change from where I'm praying from. I'm praying for my different. So one of the things that has to happen when we recognize that our lives were prone, that maybe we have, maybe we have been drawn into a trading floor and we've been bought into the fact that you need to worry. Your children are counting on you to worry. <laughs> I mean, if nobody else worries about them, who's going to worry about them? Somebody's got to worry about them. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Because now you're not praying from home. I mean, you know, I, I've shared with you about my, my granddaughter, who, who was a worship leader and just left God, just hurt, wounded, and left. And... Uh, Every time the enemy comes, because I used to get back to you and say, did you see what she wrote on Facebook? <laughs> I said, yeah. She doesn't know it. She's headed right to a supernatural encounter with God. No matter what she does, it doesn't matter because I've already claimed it. She's coming back. Amen. She's going to come back stronger than she's ever been. A lot longer. So, but when you're, but if you're praying from home, oh, what am I going to do? It's not changing praying. It's changing where you pray. Amen. Amen. And we're going to get deeper into that one. That's just an introduction to that It's time we trade with God. How did God trade? He said He became sin for us so that we could become. So we bring our sin and He hands us His righteousness. He said He became poor so that we could become rich. So we bring Him our poorness, but what does He give us? He gives us His riches. We bring, he said, I took your infirmities and their sicknesses. So you bring me your sicknesses, I'm going to give you healing. You understand what it's like to trade with God? Listen, trade your little bitty ideas about yourself for some humongous big ideas in God. Come on in. Trade your weaknesses for His amazing strength and His power. Start, tra start trading your idle time for Him to show you how to have time. That we need to get to trading with God because the difference between Satan and God in trading, Satan wants to take whatever you have good and destroy it and to give you only his bad. God wants to take everything you have that's weak and poor and bad and wants to turn it to your good. He wants to give you all of his goodness, all of his mercy, all of his love.
they look good, but they will destroy you. I mean, kids in here, don't believe it when some handsome guy on the internet is texting you, telling you, or emailing you, telling you how beautiful you are. He's probably a 55-year-old bald-headed pervert. <laughs> You understand? It's not, let me say it again, it's not what it appears when Satan's offering. When Satan's offering, it, it looks good, but it's nothing but death, trouble, misery, heartache. Get back to trusting in God, no matter how long it takes, no matter what process, no matter what I have to learn that I haven't learned before in order to walk in it, no matter what I have to experience, because I'm going to walk in what God has. never changes. It's always good. He'll never give you bad. So if there's bad in your life, hello, where do you think it's coming from? It's not from God. Amen? Amen. I'm sorry, guys. I'm on the first half of page one. <laughs> I'm 
just telling you, it, it's time. We can't be like the fly the foolish versions. It's time. We truly are the wise ones. And my cup is full. And we're growing. And we're learning. And we're trusting God in everything. Sing with me. I'm sorry for all.